So the hair we create for Creature of the Wind is like a surfing version of Hollywood uh, Catherine Hepburn. We're doing a low party, we use the mousse, we curl the hair just to create a wave. We pack the hair in the back with a very low piece of hair, like to pretend we have a barrette. And in the front, we have the hair flat and we have a wave coming on the side. So the Look for Creatures of the Wind, uh, Spring, Summer 2014, it's, it's a little bit of a reference to um, the 40s and 50s. I think what Shane and Chris do that's always interesting is really create these opposing forces of uh, textures and contrast, so we wanted the makeup to do the same. So it's really subtle, it's a, it's a vibrant lip, it's a very vibrant orange satin textured lip and then a very soft opalescent green eye with no liner, no mascara, uh, no brows. We thought that when it had those hard literal references to the era, it seemed too retro and not modern. Um, and I think it's just a you know really beautiful, dreamy, ethereal, romantic look. This collection kind of came about with the idea of kind of a non-placeable paradise. Um, the collection is called Hail Hyperborea, which is kind of a mythical place in Greek mythology where it, the sun kind of constantly shines and to live forever and so is this idea of fun. kind of trying to sort of create an idea of what that paradise might be for and we're also looking at um, the work of an artist named Eugene von Brunschenheim and looking at um, especially these photographs that he took of his wife in these um, really like these vignettes of like this kind of like tropical paradise but in a really naive way um, and kind of like the, the emotion and the feeling that was in those photographs. Um, somehow we found a really nice connection to the idea of Hyperborea and this kind of paradise that he was creating um, for, for these photographs. Looking at um, uh, Eugene von Brunschenhain's work, a lot of the colors that he worked with kind of informed the early development of the color story and um, yeah, it was about just kind of about like a mix of materials and a mix of colors that somehow um, felt like that idea to us. I mean, it's always kind of a more personal interpretation and never meant to be um, so direct or so literal. So um, it, I think it's sometimes hard to point out a piece and say that this is the manifestation of this idea. It's more about um, the idea that we kind of work from in the beginning and you know, it changes a lot by the time it gets to the end. You know, what you have at Z isn't necessarily what we started with at point A. I mean, I think it's probably our kind of lightest and most optimistic collection so and far. And most fluid, and probably sexiest. <laughs> like, we've never... <laughs> I don't think we've ever shown this much skin before. Wait and see. I thought this was such a beautiful, quintessentially spring show. The colors were great. They were kind of pale blues and white and pinks and reds. But there was sort of this distinct 50s-ish vibe to the show. It was a little bit like a little greaser-ish, kind of the cool side of the 50s with a great kind of fuller skirts below the knee and that boxy jacket. So, and I felt like there were a lot of really special pieces in this show. Like, whether you like the look put together, if you take that jacket and put it with a pair of jeans, you're gonna wear it forever. Or that skirt with just a white blouse. So I think there's, this is gonna be a really commercially successful collection. I think that the girl that wears Creatures of the Wind is, she's definitely cool and a, kind of a little bit downtown, but she's not edgy. She's actually, she likes color. She doesn't feel like she always has to wear black. She doesn't feel like she needs to wear a lot of leather. She's cool in a feminine way.
I feel like this show is sort of a culmination of all the things that they do well, but sort of very balanced, like the handcraft and the kind of interesting color combination. But they have this sort of casual, very retro, but eccentric way of working. And, you know, they're developing. And, you know, they're developing at a slow measure pace very strongly. I think, I mean, for us, the one thing that has been helpful to our growth is just doing what we really feel like doing. I mean, I think as a young collection, it's really important to not be pigeonholed. And I think, you know, we have a lot of ideas we want to explore and a lot of directions that we'd like to kind of pursue. So um, we allow ourselves the freedom to kind of do what we want to do. And I think, um, you know, if you're true to that, it always looks like you. So. And normally the things that we think are the riskiest are the things that for some reason do the best. So. Like, it doesn't seem to hurt to be a little bit more out there with those sorts of things. There was a lot of décolleté for Creatures of the Wind, for sure. Uh, and I thought that the last dress in that sort of papery nylon with the bustier cinched around the torso, um, I didn't think it was sexy necessarily, but it was very, uh, it was very seductive, I think. It, that was definitely my favorite piece in the, in the show. The show is really the only moment where you see all of the components come together. I mean, the music we've been thinking about for a long time, the clothes we've been developing, obviously, for six months. Um, but, you know, you don't see everything together until this day. So every component, you know, hair, makeup, music, lighting, um, it's all part of the, you know, these all kind of come together to form the end product. So every component is really important.